and welcome back to BD Field for game two of the Western Oregon Wolves versus your Simon Fraser University Red Leaves. My name is Aiden Doherty and I'm joined by Aton Weisfeld and we are your broadcasters for today's game. This is match game four of the of the series between Simon Fraser and Western Oregon. Yeah, and just came off of a really exciting game, number one of this Saturday's encounter where it went to nine innings, two extra innings it took for Western Oregon to get through the Red Leafs who put up a strong defense now. Getting ready to start us off for game number two of this Saturday. Game number four of four for this season series between these two teams pitching is Nevada Johnson. And up to bat first for the Wolves is number one, Bella Valdez. She's a dangerous base runner when she's on base. It's just all about getting there. Count now is one and one. Change that catcher as well for the Red Leafs is number three. Not actually. That pitch there for Johnson, just a little bit too high. Number three, Lizzie Sugreve in that catcher. Number one, Nevada Johnson, the junior out of Delta, BC. Pitching in that, starts us off. Valdez is going to look to get on base on that first that's what makes her so dangerous. You see how fast she is getting to first base there. Even with a great field, even with a great fielding opportunity, but with that from SFU, just couldn't make the play at first there. Yeah, it was a good look, a strong stretch there from Katie Zagari at first base, looking to beat the player. Strong running from Valdez, able to get her to first base, now stepping up to Zimmerman. Going to bunt it once more, fielded by Davidouk into Zagari, and they'll catch Zimmerman out. Great play there by the third baseman. That's Christian Davidouk. Great aggressive play right there to get to the ball, and a great accurate throw to first baseman to get the runner out. Opportunity once more from. Nevada Johnson on the mound. She's a transfer from UBC Okanagan. That first pitch inside, but a strike one there. That base looking to even up the series score against the Wolves. They're down two to one after Western Oregon picked up game two of yesterday's encounter. Five to one, the final score there, and won today's game one in a thrilling encounter. Took us to nine innings before they finally scored three in the in the ninth inning to put themselves well past the Red Leafs, give themselves a 5-2 to two victory. Now up to bat for the Wolves here, it's Kate Ronning. Great swing there by number two. Very early on that swing. Yeah, caught the ball on the way out and hit it into the dugout there, Ronning. But it's a happy dugout for Western Oregon. They're two and one in this series up in Burnaby, BC. They maintain a strong conference record, 17 and 13 overall. Conference and playing with momentum today. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Playing with a bit of confidence and knowing their own abilities, they trust themselves at the plate. They trust themselves defensively. For Simon Fraser, so unlucky earlier today taking the strong team like Western Oregon to extra innings had the opportunity to put it away in the eighth inning when they had two players on the base with no outs but it was a huge double play by Western Oregon which gave them that kind of survival to allow themselves to get the lead later on it's an unfortunate, uh, that was an unfortunate ending there for SFU last game. Just couldn't put it away, and I think after that, you just saw the 
You just saw the Wolves hungry for that win after that. They saw an opportunity and they took it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, SFU has come out to this one and they're, they're looking to play aggressive defense. You're seeing every time they get on the ball, they're trying to make a quick throw. They're going to be on the ball again now as it goes all the way through to Duclo. Bobbled initially. It's going to be thrown to home. Picked up by Zagari. Nobody covering first base and able to go all the way around the bases. Open scoring early is Western Oregon. Just like that. 1-0 lead for the Wolves here. Yeah. On a... An unfortunate hit there for SFU. That's, those hits there just go right past the pitcher, right past the shortstop. Nothing you can do there. Yeah. Gives Western Oregon that 1 0 lead thanks to the run of Bella Valdez. Western Oregon off to a hot start. They're using their momentum from these past few games. There's another hit right there. Great pickup in the middle. And a strong play by the shortstop. Fantastic. I believe that's number 11 there, Grace McMillan, who made the diving stop and a great throw to second base to catch out the runner. Off platform, off her back leg. Incredible throw there. Fantastic. Keep, keeps it on a 1-0 game and two outs now. Something to work for here for Nevada Johnson. Oh, and that pitch there. Johnson had, Johnson had the Wolves looking at Ghost, didn't know what to do with that pitch. Great play from the pitcher. And there, just a little bit too high. One and one count here for the for Nevada Johnson. You know, Western Oregon could have, you know, a better record than SFU. Maybe they're scoring more runs, but I really do think, and when it comes down to it, this matters more. Our uniforms today, fantastic. Absolute, absolute game changers. Yeah. I mean, Western Oregon, you can go, you know, win all the conference titles you want, you know, get all the wins you want. But are you going to look good in the photos? When you have pinstripes this clean, exactly, on, exactly. It does a lot for team confidence. There's just, there's a change there, you know, and I think. You know, something to account for is, you know, maybe, yes, they're winning one nothing so far in this game, but who's really winning, you know, on the field? Who's winning the hearts? Exactly. Who's getting better photos out of the game in their uniforms? SFU? You know. Unfortunately, that doesn't help us now with this 3-1 count. That's true. Look to make a, look to make a hold here. Quick force out at second. Not going to happen. And you see that. Great play. You see McMillan. Once more by McMillan. She's been so key to this defense. In that shortstop. A great throw out to Katie Zagari. Who makes a grab once more. She's been so slow to that first base. Good replay. And coming off the court. But it'll be an opportunity here for the Red Leafs to get themselves on offense to kick off game number four of this season series. Already looking to overcome that one nothing deficit. We'll be right back with you here on Red Leaf TV. here for the opening play of the bottom of the first it's Megan Duclos 
Oh, we'll go foul off the bat of too close. She's covering up the jerseys, the ones that we just talked so nicely about. She put on a jacket. I don't think it's that cold. I mean, I'm freezing, but still, I would never cover up those jerseys. So disappointing start to the first inning already for the Red Leafs as those jerseys are out of sight, out of view. Unfortunate. Yeah, just not what you want to see, you know, on the field, you know. Just not what you want to see. But a good eye there by Duclo. Let's that one go past for ball one. Yeah, just a starting pitcher now, Erica Solis. He's senior out of Rancho Cucamonga, California. Try and say that ten times fast. I can't. That's why I said it once. Duclos is going to hit this one into first and picked up. That's number 23, Lexi Carlos, junior out of Mililani, Hawaii. Transfer from St. Martin. So. Quick on our feet to deny Duclo. It will be the first out in favor of the Western Oregon Wolves. Now up to the bat for the Red Leaves. Grace McMillan. She's been very good defensively. We'll see what she can step up to the plate with offensively for the Red Leafs. Mike Duclo, a dangerous base runner if she gets on. Absolutely. Someone who is lightning quick and just needs to make contact with the ball. Watch that and one go. Right off of that first step, quick first step. Again, contact. fired into Carlos, who's able to make the grab and beat the runner the first. Of two great plays from Carlos back to back. Solid contact there. Just unfortunate bounce there for McMillan. Yeah. Didn't bounce high enough, so it would go over the first baseman. You hate to see it, you know. Someone that we just brought up as being so fast that all she needs to do is make contact with the ball and she'll get there, and then she doesn't get there. You know? Just makes us. We're 0 for 2. Yeah, 0 for 2. Here's Abby McGlynn. She. Got the game winner in yesterday's matchup, game number one, game winning home run. Dangerous hitter if she can make the right contact. Not gonna happen there as Solis gets it beyond there. It'll be strike one. Brings in that one one count. there by McGlynn watching that one go inside for ball two once more McGlynn she checks that swing and the third baseman calls that a strike ridiculous call one of these check swings is gonna get called today it just so happened that this was the one that was going to get called. I'm infuriated. That one nearly hits McGlynn. Has to dodge it. That one will be ball three. He'll bring in that full count. The action count. McGlynn able to make great contact, but it's picked up down that. Left field side, that's once again Sophie Franklin. So, so good for this Western Oregon side. You see on the Red Leaf TV replay is great contact on the ball by Abby McGlynn. It just didn't get all the way to the fence. Ends up being a simple grab in the end, a routine grab for Sophie Franklin, the senior out of Camas, Washington. It'll be a change now as that brings in and to the first inning, we'll be right back with you here on Red Leafs TV entering the second inning.
Back with you here for the second innings up to bat, Sydney Conklin for Western Oregon. Looking to get some more runs on the board. Nevada Johnson hyped up by her walk on song. That first pitch, a screamer, but inside for ball one. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so unlucky that last hit off the bat for Abby McGlynn as it just made its way up into the air. Something that we didn't account for before the altitude here in Vancouver atop Burnaby Mountain. You know, sometimes I'm walking out of the dorm and I just can't breathe the amount of altitude out here. So the ball just carries a little bit longer. As you can see. Yeah, that one flies off the bat, just goes foul in the end. up here in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, up on Burnaby Mountain. I don't know the exact altitude. It's, it's definitely more than like 30 feet. More than 30 feet, 100%. We're definitely above sea level. Definitely above sea level. I look down at the sea, so I can confirm that for sure. And that pitch there for Johnson, just a little high and away. Yeah. Count is two and two here. pitch there just a little two inside full count here for Nevada Johnson Let's see if she can bring the heat here all eyes on Johnson and she delivers with the strikeout caught swinging there Sydney Conklin great pitch by Nevada Johnson let's check that replay here yeah, getting her confidence going in this game Get her and a team on the right foot. Swing and a miss. Conklin. Right down the middle there. Couldn't have pitched it any better. That one will fly off the bat of Lexi Carlos OB. Foul ball strike one. Now, from Nevada Johnson, dipping in the end just enough for the umpire. You'll give the strike two strikes for Nevada Johnson to open up this account. 0 and 2 count. Aiden, what do you see off of Nevada Johnson? These opening few exchanges. And she's pitching with some real heat right now. And as you and say that, the line drive towards the left field. Way to jinx it, Aiden. That's oh. the one thing about pitching with heat. It doesn't take a lot of contact for that ball to go walk, go far. As you see right there, just a small swing there from from, w from Western Oregon, and you see it just gets right into the outfield. Nothing SFU can do about that one there. First pitch here is ball one for Sophie Franklin. Number eight for Western Oregon. Yeah, definitely one of the figures, one of the players of the game, especially in the last game. She came up huge with a great catch and throw late in the game, which created that double play, set Western Oregon up. Completely took the took the wind out of SFU's sails. Absolutely. Some 
fantastic signs out in the crowd. Just one that was brought to our attention now in the booth. Some away fans coming in with a sign. Water covers two thirds of the earth. The other third is covered by Sophie Franklin who's at the plate now. Checks out after seeing game number one today. She was everywhere in the outfield for Western Oregon. Stuck in a 2-2 count right here. See what she can do here. Definitely not afraid to take a swing. She does swing and he'll reach McMillan. Able to make the play at second. It's Janie Balkin. Thought about that throw to first there. It's too late. Franklin just made it already, but a great force play to second there. Yeah, just like a little kid at the park, going for the swing, gets it. Great shot down the middle of the field, though. Lou Franklin up to second. Once again, that line, that grounder right through the pitcher, straight over second base. Right off the bat of Carly Schlag. Take a look at that on the Red Leaf TV replay here. Yeah, those 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 hits are so tough for a pitcher to react to. You really only get half. A, you really only get a split second to make a decision there. Bunt attempt here by Valdez. She'll get caught out by Balkan at first. And a great play by SFU to take the easy out at first there to end the end the inning. Didn't overcomplicate it. Like me at a math test going for the easiest option and we'll be right back with you for the bottom of the second inning. Stick with us here on Red Leaf TV. And welcome back to Is this your... David Duke's walk-up song? She's not even American. Welcome back to Red Leafs TV here at BD Field. Up to plop to plate now is number 17, Christian Davaduke. Very patriotically American walk-up song for someone from Saskatchewan. It's okay. It's a good song regardless, I mean. She finds herself here in a 2-1 count. Yep. Favorable count here. Gonna need Brother Sam's help. 3-1 count here. Doesn't need to go chasing anything. She can find her pitch. Makes great, great contact. That one deep to the wall. Off and the pole. Home run for Christian Daviduk. 
Ties this game up at one apiece. It's a party at the plate for Christian Davidouk. And that was an absolute bomb. Yeah. You could tell the moment she made contact, that was going yard. Bimba. You see on this replay, goes right off the right off the light pole. I think that should count as three. If you hit it off a pole specifically, three you hit it off a light pole beyond the fence, that's three runs. I think for me, three one SFU. On the score, one one great moment for Christian Davidouk. How you doing? Yeah. Junior out of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Great contact there by Johnny Balkan, but fielded, it. fielded there by the first baseman. Yeah, that's okay, but how about the moment it left David Duke's bat? Oh, I mean, what, the what a snap, sound crackle, that and the pop, all Run. in one. And a beautiful S sound there. See you later, that ball nowhere to be found. Fires up the Red Leafs here, a 1-1 ball game. They're right back in it. Bottom of the second inning. Huge shout out to our cameraman, Anthony DePelto. Getting a great shot of that home run as it pounced off the pole. Now up to bat for SFU, number three, Lizzie Sugreve. Yeah, Lizzie Sugreve and catcher this game the catcher yeah she had a battle at the plate last game now she against finds herself Mackenzie Collins and now she finds herself in a very favorable 3-0 count yep. up against Erica Solis wisely she lets she uh, watches that one doesn't need to go swinging on, on a count like that you know I agree 3-1 count here still doesn't need to go swing at everything but Goes swinging at that one and just off her bat. Yeah, not foul go. there. It's gonna be a 3 2 count, so great work from Solis to get herself out of that one. Not affected by the home run that was just hit. Now working against Sugreve. Brings in that full count, 3 2. No foul out on the left. Early swing there by Sugreve. She's not anticipating that that pitch. Just a little too much there. Yeah, just like a kid at the car park. Just excited about the swings. Yeah, exactly. And that one's gonna pop contact. up. Way up in the air. Comes out with a bit of snow on it. Into the hands safely. Number seven, that's Matty Doig. Let's check out that on the replay. Great, great height on that hit, but yeah, that popped one, it up a little too much there. Well above the sea level. He drops down in the end after a couple minutes into the hands of Maddie Doy. Now, now up to bat is number 21, Catherine Lucier. Yep. Sophomore out of North Vancouver, British Columbia, went to Golden West College. Wisely watch that first pitch there for ball one. Incredibly wise. That one though. Strike one. Western Oregon are hyped on the field after every strike, even after some of the balls, like they are excited. You know, and you love to see it out on BD Field. You know who Beatty was? I do not. Who was it? No, no, I don't know either. I was just wondering if you know. Wondering if it could have been like an informative moment, but it's fine. You fake SFU students over here. Yeah. It's... Oh, great contact there by. I was gonna get away from Franklin, so doesn't cover that part of the earth in the end. And... An opportunity there. Great play. Like Catherine Lucier, able to 
Get herself to first base. No. Katie Zagari. Up to bat. From Winnipeg, Manitoba. I wonder how cold it is in Winnipeg right now. I'm going to Google it. Zagari, she watches that first pitch for ball one. Let's see if they, let's see what SFU does here. Two outs, they can't go for the bunt here. 38 degrees Fahrenheit in Winnipeg right now. Freezing. Some good contact there. Foul ball just off the fence. Brings in that 1-1 one, one count. There just looked a little, a little low and away. Yeah, it looked good to me, you know. I'm surprised that the umpire, maybe the the right arm got tired with the strikes. Just didn't want to put just it up. Just didn't want to raise it. You know, it happens. It happens. You know. So, that one gets away, and the umpire will get the arm up. And they're gonna Whoa. call her out at first. And there's serious confusion out there. SFU, SFU coach does not look happy at the call. Yeah, Let's that's check like, out that on the replay here. Yeah, we're going to have to see that one one more time. It's like me at a midterm exam, just looking confused. Oh, oh. they might have got that tag right on. Right, on, They might have just got that tag. Let's check that out one more time yeah, on the we're replay. Gonna have to see that one or two more times. 21 just thought that she dropped the ball there and got caught on it. And she looks safe to me, you know. I might be biased. I'm but sure. She looks pretty safe. I'm sure if she hit the I'm sure if she hit the hand first before the helmet. Let's take a look at that one more time. Yeah. Catch. It looks like it hits the helmet after the hand makes contact Check. with the bag. And I don't know that much about softball, but I know that means that she's safe. Yeah, in softball and baseball, Ty should go to the runner, but yeah. Interesting I'm found call. that one. I'm found that one by the umpire. I am infuriated in the box, but take a break here on Red Leaf TV we'll be right back with you for the third inning on BD Field Welcome back to Beatty Field here on Red Leafs TV. Now up to bat for the Western Oregon Wolves. Number 21, this is McKenna. This is Victoria Zimmerman. My apologies to our listeners. It's okay. Sophomore out of Edinburgh, Washington. She's done some great things so far. These opening three games, Victoria Zimmerman. Once again, looking for that bunt to get onto base. Again, running beyond the pitch, he'll make a 2-1 count. And she's a little bit down, late on that one for a tip foul for strike two here. Yep. Count is two and two for Nevada Johnson. Let's see if she can put Zimmerman away here. Zimmerman able to make good contact. Gets it all the way through towards Annika Jensen. Great contact, fitting that right between the first and second baseman there. Yeah, that'll set her up nicely. Let's check At out the that. first baseline we'll see here on the Red Leaf TV replay. Just a little miscommunication there between Zagari and Balkan, and it just gets in between the two of them. 
Western Oregon putting up five hits in these opening two or so innings, and that ball hitting another bunt there, but that one, luckily for SFU, rolls out for a foul ball. Yeah, last touch came off of Ronnie, and it hit the bat, then it hit her, that's not allowed. Something to keep an eye on here, Zimmerman on base. She's seven for 10 here on the season on for stolen base attempts. Look for her to get something going here. That is 70%. That one a slow pitch. Just trying to draw out Willoughby a little bit. Trying to keep her on her toes. Doesn't want to just keep sending her heat. Yeah, Willoughby says, no, 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 no. I see it coming. I know what you're trying to do. Doesn't take the bait. 1-0 count. Look at the steal there was Zimmerman. She'll stay at first. You can see Sue Grieve. She's she's looking for it. She's waiting for her to go so she can pull the trigger on that throw. It's a game of cat and mouse there between the two. Who will strike first? So that one, a little bit inside. Rio count here. Johnson's got a lot to do to make up for, to get her out of this hole here. And that is a that is a good start right there. Strike Fantastic. one. Fantastic. That's what we came to see. That one will pop way up in the air. It's going to eventually hit off the other side of the fence. Chasing it was Katie Zagari. And now all of a sudden, Johnson's done so well to bring herself back to a full count here. Great job by the junior. Pop up way back to the wall, over the wall. It's going to be a two-run home run. Fantastic hitting once again by Natalie Willoughby, the senior out of Junction City, Oregon. It's going to be a party at the plate for Western Oregon. They take a three-to-one lead. Now let's go check out this replay on the Red Leafs TV replay, replay here. And look at that contact. That just flies off the bat there, Aton. Yeah. And I mean, serious, serious distance on that ball way over the fence gives Western Oregon that three to one lead it's a two run home run just for Western Oregon we're looking for like a little bit of distance between them and the Red Leafs that's a few there just taking a moment to collect their bearings get their bearings straight there after that yeah yeah they Take can't let they can't let that home run dissuade them from finishing them off here in this inning they got to stay strong and finish up this uh, finish up this top of the third here. Got to keep themselves in the game. You see there from Johnson bringing out the heat for that first pitch. Unfortunately, that just couldn't couldn't find its way into the strike zone. Oh, and that one there. Smash foul. That goes way out. Right into the construction site, which by the way, they are taking forever to complete. No pressure. A one, one count here. That one there, just a little outside. That yeah, looked like it just came out of the hands there of Sue Grieve. Pops up all the way back. It's going to be picked up by Annika Jansen. Makes no mistake. Be the second out Let's of the her. inning. Let's see how she feels there. Rudimentary, kept her eye on the ball, followed all the way. Textbook play right there by it, Jensen. It's what you love to see. That's what you love to see. Yeah. 
two outs here now for the Wolves. You know what I'd love to see right now? A third out. You and me both. Strike one. That nice first pitch there. It's Nevada Johnson up against Sidney Conklin. Conklin didn't know what speed that was coming in. Oh, great grab by David Duke. What a catch there. Yeah, what a the scene. reaction and this, that just to pick that off. We're Check it out on the it. replay here. Rudleaf TV replay. Just a great hit off the bat, but quick reactions by David Duke. Brings us to a close here of the top of the third inning. We'll be right back. SFU on offense here on BD Field. back with you here for the third inning up to bat here Katie Zagari gonna bring in that 1-1 one, one count what are you seeing out on the field so far for this fourth and final game of the season series, Aiden? Well, it was a great, great inning there for uh, for the Wolves there batting, getting that home run as we saw. Yeah. But a great finish, but a great end to that inning from uh, SFU. We had some angels there in the outfield for a moment. But, um, you know, and but honestly, a great play there by the third baseman, especially. And here's a hit right here. By... Unfortunately, though, I think that was just a little bit on the inside of her bat. Just not enough on it. Yeah, just, you know, not as quick getting out of the batter's box. Maybe the feet stuck in the sand lot. Honestly. Felt like her head, felt like her feet was in quicksand there, you know? Could have been. Could have been. Up to the plate, Annika Jansen. She had that great catch there in that last inning. Yeah. Let's see what she can do up to bat. Home run close. Aaron pitch there for ball one. And that pitch right there, a good eye by Jansen to watch that one go by for ball two. Sophomore now, no longer the rookie on the team. Solus, but Solus there with a great pitch. That would look like an absolute money ball. You know, and the way she's pitching out there, it just feels like so natural. She could be the natural. Yeah. You know, and these pitches coming at you with speed. 
and you know when when it comes with speed like that and you know sometimes with the curveball it oh. provides a lot of trouble with the curve not there for Jansen as she makes contact but she'll get caught out at first You know, that was a great hit there, you know. It was a sweet hit, but... Sweet like sugar. Exactly. But just not enough to get it, not enough to get her on first there. Yeah, and you know, Solis doing a great job with the ball in her hand. You know, some would say a million dollar arm. So valuable to this Western Oregon side. And you know, someone who's really taking them up a level, up to the major league. Good contact there, though. I do blow. It's an unfortunate get bounce. Yeah, caught out. And Western Oregon bring this third inning to an end. Bit of movie references there for you guys watching at home. We'll be right back with you on Red Leaf TV for the fourth inning. And welcome back to Red Leaf TV here at Beatty Field, also known as the Field of Dreams. SFU is down 3-1 to the Western Oregon Wolves here. That last inning, last inning, uh, SFU just could not get runs on the board, let alone a runner on base. Looking out to bat for the Wolves here, Lexi Carlos. Looking to add to that 3-1 lead is Carlos. She makes great contact right away down to that center field line stop at first great play by Lexi Carlos yeah, the Wolves are really finding their spots right now they're really picking the gaps in the SFU's defense yeah it's a warm welcome to the game for new pitcher Julia Hansen great hit off the bat of Carlos now up to bat for the red now up to the bat for the Wolves is Sophie Franklin Gonna look to bunt it, doesn't keep it within the white lines. And that's always a, something that I recommend for all the softball players out there is you wanna keep it within these white diagonal lines. Oh, absolutely. It know. really helps out with the game. Exactly, keeps the game moving, you know? Yeah. You wanna get other players involved and you know, there's no one standing out there to get the ball. That one's gonna pop up into the middle, a tough play, but SFU able to get it done. What a fortunate play for SFU there, getting that lucky lucky bounce there for an easy play at second. You can see here on the Red Leaf TV replay, it's picked up by McMillan and she's able to find the teammate in the second base for the easy play. There at second base is Avery Barker, a junior out of Abbotsford, BC. High school listed as Yale, so we have a Yale graduate on BD Field today. See what Hansen can do here. She's coming in, coming in, taking over uh, during a 3-1 three, three, lead for the Wolves here. And a great pitch right there, getting 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 Carly Schlag to swing there. SFU known as the Ivy League of Burnaby Mountain. A 
little late there for number 13. Some good contact, but she's got a lot of work to do now with this 0 and count, with this 0-2 count, I should say. Great contact out to that right field line. Yeah, but an even better play there by the right fielder, Annika Jansen. Once more, quick on her feet. Able to make the snag. Fantastic play. Once again, SFU holds the line. Keeps it on one, keeps it at one runner on first base. Uh, two outs now. This could be a very easy play to second for them. Yeah, could be. The moment they can get their team off the field in the hands of Julia Hansen. And look at Sue Grieve here. She is, every pitch there, she's popping up, expecting that steal for second. Yeah, just waiting for it. It's another game of cat and mouse, and I've watched enough Tom and Jerry to know that, you know, and it could be a long time coming. And she goes. And she's gonna get there with ease. Great play there, number eight. That's Sophie Franklin. Makes a great play. Get herself out to second base. It sets up Western Oregon with a bit of a more advanced. Now the play for dynamic. SFU. Now the play for SFU here should just be a quick throw to first. No need to make the tag up. That one off the bat of. Bella Valdez. We have a 2-2 two -two count here. Let's see if Julie Hansen can put the put the wolves away here. Great hit by Valdez. And here comes the throw to home. Gonna be met at the plate, but she's able to get there. But Franklin well is ahead. too fast. Yeah. Great running around the bases by Sophie, Sophie Franklin. Bella like Valdez. Flash. Bella Valdez with the double for the RBI. A four-run lead for Western Oregon. You just hope uh, you just hope SFU can can crawl out of this hole they've dug themselves into. Yeah. Tough play. Great hit by Bella Valdez and really set Franklin on her way. It's a comfortable run home. Now looking to steal. Third is Valdez. The ball's going to get away from the Red Leafs. And, and here comes the throw to home again. Valdez but will get home. it is too slow. Two quick runs on the bounce for Western Oregon. And that one, all of the Red Leafs doing. They're going to talk things over on the mound. SFU. Game kind of getting away from them here in the fourth. If you're not talking things over. Looking to get themselves off the field. They've got two outs, one out away, and up against Zimmerman. That one will run foul. Seems the Wolves have figured out SFU's defense here. They're really just picking their spots and really choosing where to where to put this put these uh, put these hits. Every time it just seems to be going right over an SFU defender's head or right between two defenders in the perfect spot. Some great hitting so far. That one, Zimmerman. Right into the dugout. That one just goes over the head. 
yeah. of her teammate. Maybe there's a disagreement there beforehand. Might have been a slight disagreement. Going right for the dugout was Zimmerman. Pitch for Hansen just goes high and away. 2 2 count here for Zimmerman. That one's going to run foul for Zimmerman. He's in that 2 2 count with two outs. Triple twos on the board. Again, out towards the dugout. I think she's mad at somebody in there. Now, if you're Hanson here, you've seen she's fouled off your last three pitches. What do you throw here in this next one to change it up? How do you how do you get Zimmerman to swing at nothing here? I don't know if Hanson's gonna answer you right now. She's pitching, but she might get back to you eventually. Was that it? That did not look like it was it. 3-2 count here now for Zimmerman. Another foul ball there for Zimmerman. We have a great battle here up at this up at this up bat right now yeah. between Julia Hansen and Victoria Zimmerman. Full count here. Lots can happen off this pitch. That one's gonna pop up out towards the outfield, and it just is unfortunately just off the glove. Get up. Better look at it here on the Red Leaf TV replay as that one came up over the head of Avery Barker who couldn't come down with it. The uh, single there for Zimmerman. After a long battle up at the plate. Yeah, and SFU just not being able to get themselves off the field. Now once again, Cat and mouse game with the runner on first. I got money on the cat. I think I'll take that action. One ball here. And that one just goes low and away. That's for ball two. SFU, gotta stay composed here. Stay composed so you can get off the field. That's how you start right there. Quick pitch right down the middle for strike one. Oh, and sent down that left field line. It's gonna bring Zimmerman up to second. That line drive just went over the head of Davaduke. Yeah, good hit there from Kate Ronning. Western Oregon catching fire offensively. This is a round where they caught fire yesterday in game two. Yesterday game two was a scoreless affair until the fourth inning when... A little bit of deja vu here on Beatty Field. Five to one ball game. This is the final score of yesterday's matchup. Game number two. Now for the Wolves here, Natalie Willoughby, number 22. She gets caught watching that one for strike one. One and one count here. Another one 
right down the middle for strike two there. A one two count here. SCVU has a chance to get off the field. Although Willoughby should not be should not be underestimated. She's got 16 RBIs on the season here. Yeah, she hit two that home on, run earlier. And with two runners on base, we could be seeing some deja vu here. But Julia Hansen gets the strikeout to end the top of the fourth. Caught swinging there was Willoughby, and now I'll get SFU on offense. We'll be right back with you on Red Leaf TV. Back with you here for the bottom of the fourth inning. Up to bat is Grace McMahon, and she's going to look to bunt it to first, and she'll get the tag. Unfortunately, just bad timing there. Yeah. Huge. Right down the first baseline, straight to the first baseman. Yeah. Just really unfortunate. Not the way that SFU would have wanted to have started this one, but. You know, see there, she tried to get around there, tried to pull the dance, tried to pull the dance off, but she don't dance. Unlucky there. And, you know, another thing that I think important to note here in this softball match is the walk-up songs. You know, mm -hmm. if you had a walk-up song, Aiden, what would it be? Oh, that's a tough one. That's really tough. I might need a, I might need a little bit of time to figure we'll this out. We'll get back to it. We'll get back to it for sure. I'm hearing some good ones today. I'm hearing some very good ones today. A lot of country, a lot of country. There's a bit of rap, you know. Something I haven't heard a lot of. No El Alfa, no Spanish music, you know. We're playing baseball. Oh, we're playing softball. It's, 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 it's a similar sport, you know, and ultimately, you know, that's where my disappointment resides, is that growing up, growing up, <laughs> Disappointing hit there by McGlynn to go for a foul ball. Strike two. Yeah, I'll bring in the 2-2 count there. McGlynn's battling here at the plate. That one there just caught the inside of her bat. Uh, yeah. Inside of her bat, you can see her wincing there on the hit. Yeah, just couldn't make the right contact there, McLinn. I hope to go yard if it comes off the bat clean. pitch in there just goes to a little too inside there for Solis for ball three a full count here for McGlynn the action count let's see what would she let's see what she can do with this eight on yeah it'll be interesting to see what Solis puts up here been having a great game so far the pitcher and now a moment to make a statement McGlynn with great contact that's back towards the wall be picked up but Zimmerman gets there yeah. for the catch 
That one not far away. Look at the celebrations from Zimmerman. It's a party on Beatty Field for Western Oregon. That one all the way back towards the wall and Zimmerman able to watch it the whole way through. Been a great player for the Wolves is the sophomore from Edensburg, Washington. Solis there, catches Davidouk down the middle for strike one. Nice contact to there. To. See if she can get there. It's going to be a race to first. Tie goes to Davidouk. Great play. Great running from Christian Davidouk. It was dropped in the infield, and that gave Davidouk that little bit of edge. That's all she needed to get there ahead of the ball and get herself to first base. The last thing you want to do for these red leads, you don't want to give them an inch. They will take a mile. With a runner on first there, let's see what they can see what they can work with this. Great walk-up song from Avery Barker. The best one that I've seen so far today, in my opinion. A little bit of house music. It's what everybody needs. A little change-up goes a long way. Great pitch there by Solis. Yeah, it gives her that 0-2 lead. She's in a good spot. 0-2 count here. It's going to be very, really tough to climb out of this, climb out of this count here. Yeah, the senior from Rancho Cucamonga, California. That one's going to be met at second, and tough play made. Great sliding catch at second there. See that one. One more time on the Red Leaf replay. Great turn and throw. And that foot was on the bag. He'll keep Western Oregon in the lead five to one as we bring this fifth inning, fourth inning to a close. We'll be right back with the fifth inning in just a few moments. Stick with us here on Red Leaf TV. Back with you here for the fifth inning of play. Getting us started at the plate, Maddie Doig. Watching that one go. It will be ball and one against Julia Hansen. Western Oregon maintaining this five to one lead in the ball game. A deserved lead. They've really controlled the tempo of the game offensively. They got themselves in a groove in the past two quarter two innings and Made it very difficult for Simon Fraser to get anything going offensively themselves. So, apart from that, David Duke home run. Only the two hits on the day so far for the Red Leafs compared to the Wolves who have put up 10 of their own hits. That one off the bat of Doig will test the reactions of those in the crowd. Nice little souvenir there for the fans. Yeah, and you know, Aiden, when you go out to these to the baseball games, what's something that you look for? A hot dog or what's what's a go-to meal? Go-to, love a good thing of Cracker Jacks, love some spits at the game, yep. sunflower seeds. That one. That one goes high though. And it'll be picked up. Great play, attentive on that left-hand side. Was the Red Leafs. That one was going foul. And little celebration in the outfield. 
for the Red Leafs. Look at that tracking there. One out now for the Red Leaves. Just the start they would have won coming out into this fifth inning. Up the bat now is Conklin. So you're saying Spitz, Cracker Jacks, Sunflower Seat, yeah, all the all the classics. The classics. What about you? You know, I, I like a hot dog. I don't mind the hot dog. You know, I've only been to one baseball game before. It was at the, the Miami Marlins Stadium. I had this uh, patacones. It's like a Venezuelan and Colombian kind of food. Mm -hmm. It's quite good, to be honest. I don't expect to find it at Beauty Field, but we do have a great selection in our convenience store. You can get a Kit Kat, Lay's chips. They got Ruffles. Yeah, our live events do do a great job here at BD Field. Yeah, gotta gotta give a shout out to them. One two count here now. That one off the top of the bat. And that one just goes over the fence. Yeah. Once again, testing the reaction, some of the crowd, making sure everybody's on their toes. Never a dull moment here at Beatty Field. Never. Hanson's pitch is met once more off the tip of the bat by Conklin. It'll be foul once more. Defending the plate there, Sidney Conklin. the hands of Avery Barker. Trickle through towards Annika Jansen. He'll give Conklin the free pass over to first base. Just an unfortunate error there. Doesn't get her glove high enough or just an unfortunate bounce there. Yeah, it just takes a bounce off the dirt there. Unpredictable and just unfortunate. Not the Red Leafs day defensively so far in this one. They're Hoping to turn things around. Oh, and here comes now. That could be Steal a rundown. A Gonna get there safely as that ball just got away from the catcher there. Even after, even after, even when the runner took a little bit of a delay, yeah, still okay. making it to second there. Not enough time for Lizzie Sugreve to get the ball over. That's a great first pitch there. Strike one. Yep. Another strike there for Julia Hansen. For a one two count here for, Car for Lexi Carlos. Working against. Julia Hansen, Julia Hansen, one of the leaders of this team, a senior from Beaconsfield, Quebec. And that foul ball there just goes over the head of the Western Oregon first base coach. On her toes. Exactly. Not just the fans being kept on their toes today. Gonna and the ump rules that as a foul ball. Yep. I believe that's because it hit the ground right off the bat. It didn't cross the plate before hitting the ground, I believe. Yeah, that's not allowed. Good call by the ump there. Again, here's the one-two count for Carlos. And now the ump takes an unfortunate hit there. Good heads up play by Sugri to get it out to first. And that right there, folks, was our first drop third strike of the weekend. And on a, if our viewers don't know, on a drop third strike, if first base is empty, the runner may run and take for it, may run and try and take first base. However, they can be thrown out. A 
Great heads up play there by Sugreeve. Now the Wolves send up Sophie Franklin to bat. She's had a good game today, Aton. Yeah, she's been really special. I mean, you know, the, she's been dedicated, you know, defensively all over the field, offensively coming up big when it matters, and, you know, the signage in the stands. Not wrong in what they say. You know. Got to give credit where credit's due. She finds herself now at the, at the at an o, on a, in an 0-2 count. She's got a lot to do to make up. Yeah, seeing you. Does have a runner on at third. Camus Washington and gonna make good contact on that ball. It just hits off the fence. Run foul. It'll be strike two and 0-2 count. But an RBI, but an RBI possibility here for Franklin yeah. if she makes good contact. Runner on third. That one's sent towards Avery Barker, makes the grab, and now send SFU to the dugout. Great defensive play there. Avery Barker now set SFU up to take over offensively. We'll be right back with you on BD Field. Stick with us here on Red Leafs TV. And welcome back to BD Field. My name's Aiden Doherty, and I'm joined by Aton Weisfeld. And you're watching Red Leaf TV here. Now up to bat for the Red Leaves, number three. That's Lizzie, Lizzie Sugrave, Sugrave yep. the catcher. They're just joining us now. It's a five to one ball game in favor of Western Oregon Wolves. They've done a great job defensively and offensively. Defensively, really making it difficult for the Red Leafs to pick up any momentum. But you can never count out the red leaves at home. Fortunately here, Sue Grieve sitting in an 0-2 count. Not the start she wanted to this inning. No, and the red leaves really have to turn things around sooner rather than later if they're gonna make a drive towards this game. They're down four runs and it needs to come by. There's gonna be a Quickly. push, it's gonna come, it's gonna come now. Yep. And that is not the, that is not what you want to see. Three, three pitches, three strikes. Yeah, great pitching by Solis there. She's really been on top of her game since coming on for this second game. It's game four or four for the series on this sunny weekend here in Burnaby, British Columbia. Coming up to the plate, Catherine Lucier. She wisely watches that one go too low for ball one. And then and that's another pitch too low, ball two here. That, 
strike called. That pitch there, got caught watching that one. Yeah, great pitching once again by Solis. He's just, found that, job, yeah. just found that one, just snuck that one on inside for strike. One. That one a little bit too inside. He'll bring in that 3-1 count. Now have a little bit of wiggle room here for Lucier. Catherine Lucier, yep. Just gotta be patient with this. Go swing in and can't connect. Full count here now for Lucier. Yep. Senior versus freshman and senior comes out on top. Great pitching by Solis. Yeah, that inside. She really knows how to. She really fakes the bat. Really baits the batters into swinging on those inside pitches here, as you can see. Yeah, it just makes it so difficult there for Lucy to get contact on the ball and get the look that she wanted. Yeah, if you're a batter there, there's nothing you can do to. Bend that elbow in, there's really nothing you can do on a pitch like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, you know. Up now. to bat, Katie Zagari met by a strike. Zagari able to make great contact. Gonna be a race at first base, which she will win. Great play by Katie Zagari. Able to get the third hit of the game for the Red Leafs. Get yourself out to first base. Now up to bat number two, Annika Jansen. That was a great, that was a great play by Kate Ronning there. A great, great catch and a great throw, but honestly, just a better run there by Zagari. Yeah, just quick on her feet. This one here for Jansen, it was outside, ball one. It's gonna one. spin away, yeah, it's gonna bring in ball one, but Solis really being patient with her pitch selection. That one inside for strike one, it'll bring in that one, one count. Good hit from Jansen. It's going to be caught out. Well, At second play, Zagari unable to beat the ball. It's a good play from Kate Ronnie. Now, bring the top of this, or the bottom rather, of this fifth inning to a close. We'll be right back with the sixth inning. Five to one ball game. In favor of Western Oregon, stick with us here on Red Leafs TV. Back with you here to kick off the sixth inning. Ball thrown down the middle by Julia Hansen. We'll 
Called a little bit low. Ball one. Working against number 13, that's Cardi Schlag. Schlag here working with a 2 0 count. That one's going to go foul, bringing that 2 1 count. That looked like she didn't know if she wanted to swing or not. Yeah, just caught in two minds there. Yeah, you could tell by the way she was shaking her head. Yeah, it's like when I go to McDonald's. I don't know if I want the nuggets or the burger. Sometimes I have to get both. And then you're left with like half of a burger, you know, left over. And it's just not what you want to see. It's always a crisis. Yeah. That one, no crisis whatsoever as it pops up in the air. Easy for the outfielder to take. And a little celebration there. That's number 20 down that left-hand side, Abby McGlynn. Now we go back to the top of the lineup here for the Wolves with Bella Valdez. A very dangerous base runner here. And that first pitch just sneaks inside. Strike one there for Julie Hansen. Field pop, and that one's easily fielded there. Great play by McMillan. Two outs here now. And once again, Victoria Zimmerman comes to the plate. She's been deadly all day, both as a batter and base runner. Yeah, she's been tough to deal with here for the Red Leafs. There she gets a hit out to first base. It could be three quick outs, and it is. Great but play I, defensively by the Red Leafs. What a beautiful throw there. Is that number 17, Davidouk? That was Davidouk right there who got the throw out to Katie Zagari and a great reach out by Zagari to complete the play. We'll be right back here. SFU taking the offensive field. The sixth inning. Welcome back to Beatty Mountain with uh, Red Leaf TV here. Now Red Leafs back to the top of the lineup with Megan Duclos. And she gets a bunt here to start it off. And she's safe at first. Great show of speed there, Megan Duclos. And that is how you start the bottom of the six for if you, if you are SFU. Batter on base at the top of the lineup, your best hitters coming up. That's the start you want if you're SFU in this sixth. Yeah, that's exactly what you want to see. It's great play there from the Red Leafs, and they're going to have to have a lot more where that came from in these final two innings. Well, it's McMillan's turn to set this off. Looking she to bunt. Doesn't get the throw that she would have liked off the arm of Solis. It'll be a ball number one. 
looks like it looks like the wolves are anticipating the bunt and or steal you could tell by the way solis is just throwing it outside they're anticipating that duclo is going to go for second she is the team's leading leading she leads the team in stolen bases this year i believe she has 18 for 20 on stolen base attempts i mean as you can see right there absolutely fantastic percentage and someone who can do it at a high frequency megan duclo as you can Broke. see, the as you can see, the wolves here are definitely trying to keep her on her toes, keep her on that first base. Yeah, that one there, high inside. Great be ball three, and McMahon in a great spot here, playing this very patiently. It seems that the wolves are trying to decide whether or not they want to strike her out or throw out Duclo at second. Yeah, caught in two minds. And right down the middle, it's going to be strike one. An interesting call here. 3 1 count. Got the runner at first. That one looking to meet Duclo at second. As you can see, Duclo called safe. Great play by Megan Duclo. As you can see, that's what makes her so deadly. That is her 19th stolen base this year. Now, now puts the Red Leaves in a much more favorable position here. Not having that force out at second gives them an opportunity to get a runner on third here. Coming up to Abby McGlynn next. Duclo doing what Duclo does best. Now, the, now it's the Wolves' turn to be on the back foot. Opportunity here for the Red Leaves to take and build momentum. And that McGlynn hit it. Looking to hit it over the head of Sophie Franklin, able to make the grab. Unlucky there for the Red Leafs. It was McMillan who had a strong shot off the bat. Fortunately, Franklin was just right in the right place at the right time. Sign that does not lie. Now, once again, batter up, batter up with a runner on second. We'll see what SFU can do here. Yeah, an opportunity here for Abby McGlynn as she grounds that one out. She'll be beat at first, but it moves Duclo up to third. Once again, an unfortunate contact just goes right to the defender there. The Red Leafs, they do advance Duclo to third, though. Yeah, and an opportunity here for Christian Daviduk. I mean, she got the home run earlier in the day. She was the spark that set off the score here for the Red Leafs. Looking to do it again here, Daviduk, as she sends it down that left field side, but it's Easily grabbed in the end. It will be three and out for the Red Leafs. That brings this sixth inning to a close. We'll be right back with you on BD Field for the seventh and final inning. And welcome back to BD Field. My name is Aiden Doherty. I'm joined by Aton Weisfeld for SFU Softball here with the SFU Red Leafs versus the Western Oregon Wolves. Yeah, back with you here for the seventh and final inning. The Red Leafs looking to get a quick three and out here so that they can find themselves 
in pole position to make a comeback. They got to be on offense and keep the score at 5-1. It's in the hands of Julia Hansen, who's got started on a 1-1 count. That one there, just a little too low. And up to bat for the Wolves here is Kate Ronning, number two, the third baseman. Yeah, Ronnie has done a great job defensively, especially being great and accurate with her throws. It's made it very difficult for the Rallies to get things going, get people on base. They only have four hits on the day compared to Western Oregon, who achieved 10 of their own. That last pitch there, just a little too high. I'll bring in that full count, three, two count. Start off the top of the seventh inning. Four of four of the season series between the Wolves and the Red Leafs as that one grounded out to the shortstop. And a great grab by Katie Zagari. Fantastic play between McMillan and Zagari. Just a great overall, great overall team effort between those two. As we see on this replay here. A double bounce here, but a great adjustment there by McMillan. And a strong throw, but how about the catch from Zagari? Able to meet it just ahead of Ronnie who was there. Great strike there by Julia Hansen, just sneaking inside there. Once again, a dangerous hitter here for the Wolves in Natalie Willoughby. She's already had a home run today. Now finds herself on a 1-1 one, one count here. One out here for the for the Red Leaves. Looking to hold the Wolves here to no runs in order to make the comeback. And that one gets popped up to left field. Gonna be high in but the that air, is brought down in the end by McGlynn. Yeah, easily tracked there by McGlynn. Even with the sun peeking out here in this late afternoon. Great. Great focus and great catch there. Yeah, up to two outs now and just one away from getting themselves on the offensive side of the ball. And that first pitch there, strike one. Up to bat for the Wolves is Matty Doig. Just a little high and away for Hansen. Check swing there. First base on pulse. No swing for ball two. Two one count here for Doig. about a doy go fall for foul bring in that 2-2 two -two count once again a foul ball going right near the wolves dugout there lots of disagreements lots of disagreements in that dugout today gotta be 2-2 two -two count here that wow. one's just sneaks past Sneaks past second base into the outfield there. Yeah, just beyond the reach of Avery Barker and Katie Zagari. A great hit by Matty Doig, and that keeps Western Oregon in the game offensively. An unfortunate, unfortunate play there for SFU. Yeah, it's going to keep Western Oregon in control of the game offensively. Still two outs, but now with a runner on base. They're going to sub off Maddie Doig. Coming on for her is going to be 
Number three, Aaliyah Gaburio. Now up to the bat for the Wolves. Number nine, Sydney Conklin. Western Oregon's substituted the league for a pinch runner. Wolves looking to catch. Tabario out on first. Uh, would have been a warm welcome to the game for the pinch runner. That first ball there goes for strike. That one's going to pop up high in the air. Up over the fence. So fall foul, bringing that 0 2 count. Opportunity here for the Red Leafs to get off the field defensively. So they look to mount a comeback on the offensive side of the ball. And Conklin finds yourself in a 1 2 count here. Too high there. Ball two. Looks like you worried about that runner on first. Two outs there. They just know they just got to make the easy play here. There, Conklin able to work her way from an 0 2 count all the way to a full count. Good patient play there by the batter, and now, now the pressure goes. Now the pressure goes back to Hanson here. Yeah, an opportunity here for Western Oregon to stay on the offensive side of the play. That one's going to pop up way up into the air. Barker calling for it and able to make the grab. That'll get SFU on the offensive side of the ball. They need four runs to tie it up. We'll be right back with you here. Coming to you from Beatty Field. And welcome back to Beatty Field with the SFU Red, SFU Red Leaves versus the Western Oregon Wolves. My name's Aiden Doherty and I'm joined by Aton Weisfeld. Yeah, back with you here for the bottom of the seventh inning, SFU mounted the climb. They need four runs in this inning in order to take it to overtime. Five runs would win it. It is in their hands up first. 
to take on the responsibility is Jenny Balkins just subbed into the game. So he's just three outs away from sealing the win for Western Oregon. Just pitched a great game so far. She's just three outs away. Very interesting to see how Western Oregon approaches final inning. They know they can afford one, two runs, but can't let the Red Leafs get hot. Can't let the Red Leafs load the bases up. And Second pitch there, down the middle for strike one. Yeah, would have been one that I thought Janny Balkan would have Taking liked to have swing at. Yeah, you know. It looked like it might have been right in her zone. Takes a swing at that one. It'll and an unfortunate fall for Ronnie over the head of Carlos, who's able to make the grab. That's one quick out in favor of Western Oregon as Janny Balkan makes way. Stepping up for the first time for the Red Leafs is McKenna Simmons. Number seven, a freshman from Moose Jaw, Saskatoon. The best city name that we have heard so far this weekend, Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. Hello to all of our listeners over in Moose Jaw. Simmons, what an introduction as she hits it by the wall. Off the glove of Zimmerman, McKenna Simmons still going. What an introduction to SFU softball for the freshman, McKenna Simmons. Very first ball that she's faced all weekend, and she almost hits it out of the park. It comes off the glove in the end of Zimmerman, and that'll set her up at second base. And it's just un such an unfortunate play for Zimmerman there. She's been so good all game today. Just that ball right there, it's just not enough. Yeah. Great showing from McKenna Simmons, also a member of the SFU volleyball team, dual sport athlete. McKenna Simmons, a great double, and that one might just be the spark that the Red Leafs needed in this seventh inning. That one there. Not that gonna one fall like the way of uh, Cassidy Affeld, but a little bit of momentum going the Red Leafs way. A little bit of excitement on the air. That might have been the play they needed. They just needed something to go their way. Yeah, something to light the spark. And that one popped up by Affeld back to the wall. It could be over the wall, but a great grab. Now going to third is Simmons. Simmons will get there comfortably. A fantastic grab on that backfield. I believe that's Matty Doig over on the left field side. Great tracking of the ball there. Yeah, and Fantastic play to get the out. How dangerous would that have been if that fell for Cassidy Affeld and McKenna Simmons making her way around the bases. But she's up to third base and now stepping up to the plate. Katie Zagari. But now the Red Leafs, looking at two outs right now, they don't have any wiggle room to work with. They're gonna need a lot of help. It's gonna have to come off the bat of Zagari. And that first pitch right there, strike one. So it's now two strikes away from finishing this game. Western Oregon looking to hold on to that 5-1 score line. That one a little bit too low for the umpires, like, you know, bringing that 1-1 count. Zagari looking to play hero. Picked up by Solis, and that will end the game. Western Oregon, a great showing, both offensively and defensively, to win the game 5-1 to show you a replay on that last one. Doesn't look like he got the full part of the bat there. Looks like he just caught the end, just caught the tip of the bat. An easy field there for Solis and Yeah, an it's been consistent throw. there for Western Oregon all day long defensively. They haven't made too many errors and you know, a deserved victory for them. They've come into Burnaby in one, three of four. Thank you for joining us here on Red Leafs TV. It's been a joy to commentate. We'll be back with you next week as the Red Leafs Post four more, four more home games.
as we play against Western Washington here at BD Field for now. Have a great weekend. Thank you for tuning in, and have a great day.